Hey there, I want to return back to the Monte Carlo series for this video uh, looking at probability of a touch in finance. So as the name implies, the probability of a touch is just going to be what's the odds of a given stock reaching a certain target price point, either higher or lower, in a certain amount of time. I don't know how much longer I'm going to continue the Monte Carlo series. It's not really my um, field of expertise. I've done a little bit at work with um, things like particle filters but um, as I said, it's not my, my main focus. I might continue with um, probability of making 50% on an option trade. It's basically just an extension of what we're going to do here, but uh, we'll see. If there's interest, I'll continue. If not, I will probably only do one or two more Monte Carlo videos and then do other, other topics. This is something that's pretty easily done in Python, so that's what we're going to do. You could also do it in MATLAB C or whatever. It, it's all pretty straightforward, and uh, um, as Monte Carlo things go, this is really easy. So, having said all that, let's do it. Probability of a touch. Let's do some background stuff first before moving on to the coding. So, to state the problem explicitly, if we have a stock at some given price, what is the probability it will reach some other price in a given amount of time? As an example, we'll use Apple as our stock. Uh, when I grabbed the information from my trading platform, the stock was trading at 196. At that time, I had sold the 215 strike call, which expired in 44 days. So I want to know, what's the probability that my call will be touched? In other words, what's the probability that the stock will reach $215 within that 44-day window? To solve this, we're going to assume the returns are normally distributed. That is, the day-to-day -day percent change in price follows some sort of normal distribution. We're also going to need to know the width of that distribution, in other words, its standard deviation, and we can get that from the option implied volat volatility. In the example code, I'm going to use the implied volatility for that option series that I had happened to sell in Apple. And lastly, since this is a video on Monte Carlo techniques, you're not going to be surprised to know we're going to use Monte Carlo methods to estimate the probability. So this is our model uh, equation here. S is the stock price, so S sub I is the stock price at the ith day. R is the risk-free rate. I'm going to take it to be 2% annualized, and then we're going to need to scale it down to a day-to-day -day, uh, interest rate. Delta T is the time step. Uh, sigma is the implied volatility, and that also needs to be scaled down from an annualized uh, number to a day-to-day -day thing. Epsilon sub i is a number just sampled from the normal distribution. And I should probably specify the standard normal distribution, so mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. And the last thing I forgot to mention is delta t is going to be equal to 1, so 1 day is our time step. Now before moving on, I should mention there is some sort of ambiguity here. Uh, do we take calendar days or do we take trading days? In other words, how do, we, how do we handle weekends? Just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to ignore the weekends and do trading days. So it's 252 trading days per year as opposed to 365 calendar days per year. As to which is the best approach, you're going to have to do some sort of back testing. You'd model with calendar days, with trading days, and then see how those models compare against uh, actual trading data. So the way this is going to work is we're going to simulate a large number of stock runs. I've thrown, shown three uh, hypothetical runs here. And we're going to count how many of those runs the uh, price reaches our target price. So in this example, we're using 215 as our target price. It maybe reaches it here only once in this top, because kind of top, um, top curve here. So it would be like 1, and then you divide it by the total of three total runs, and you get an answer of a rough probability of one-third. Now, obviously, you're going to use a lot more runs than three. So, <clears throat> this is what it would look like roughly if you don't, I believe this was a thousand runs. And so it's the same idea. You count the number of times, the number of runs that the stock reaches uh, 215 or greater. And you can see that it's actually a fairly large number of times and divide those by the number of uh, total runs. And just to show a histogram here, this is a showing basically the distribution of stock prices on the last day. So it kind of, as you can see, follows a normal distribution, which we'd expect because, well, we've explic explicitly set our code to use a normal distribution. Okay, before I actually begin this, let me just come out and admit I was a total bonehead. I not only wrote all the code and recorded all the videos, I had edited 90% of them together before I realized I had mixed up calendar and trading days in my code, and it was a mishmash of the two. So instead of just trying to edit it so that it looks okay, I'm just going to go back and redo it. So if you see any uh, code just magically appear, it's just because I'm being lazy and copying and pasting from my, um, my test code uh, into here. So I will try not to do that, though. So import numpy as mp. We're going to need numpy, and I'm going to include matplotlib, too. So uh, import matplotlib. 
dot lib dot pyplot as plt. And one of the mistakes I made was the number of days. Uh, there were 44 calendar days left until expiration of that option, and there was actually, it happened to be 38, um, 38 uh, trading days. There were several weekends in, involved there. So, um, next thing, our time step is going to be one day. And, and, and we're going to have a number of samples. These are going to be our test runs, uh, our simulation runs. And I'm just going to set this to 1,000 for now. You'd probably want this bigger in an actual, um, actual usable code, but 1,000 should work well enough. Okay, let's save that. And something looks funky here. Oh, this should, first of all, be DT. And there has to be an equal sign in there. I swear, sometimes I think, you know, if I had a brain, I'd be dangerous. Okay, now let's move on. And just to save time, I'm going to copy and paste this. This is the risk-free rate here, R, and that's going to be 2%, and that's going to be divided by the number of calendar days, just to scale it down to a daily, uh, daily interest rate. Uh, DT I've already added, and then the uh, sigma, the implied volatility, happened to be 20, roughly 27%, and that's an annualized number, so that needs to be scaled down to a daily number. And this is a little bit uh, more complicated. You have to do that by multiplying in times the number of days, in this case one, divided by the number of calendar days, uh, I'm sorry, trading days in the year, and then square rooting that. So uh, it's divided by the square root of 252. So, okay, what's next? Okay, now we're going to generate all of our random numbers that we're going to actually use for the Monte Carlo simulation. And we're going to put them into a matrix um, just because it's, the code is faster that way. So, we're going to use uh, epsilon equals np.random.normal, and we're going to do a matrix. So, we're going to have size, and uh, that's going to be equal to, we're going to have, let's see, we're going to have each row be a sample run. So, we're going to have a sample number of rows, and we're going to have days number of columns. So each column is going to represent an individual day and each row will, uh, will represent a specific specific run for that um, that series of, of prices. So that's all there is to that. So we now move on to actually calculating the percent daily percent change of the stock for all of those runs and all those days. So enter and call this variable ds underscore s for like delta s divided by s the percent uh, percent change of the stock price uh, day to day and this is just straight out that formula that appeared on the slide it's the interest rate times the uh, time step plus the implied volatility times the square root of the time step times the uh, random number that we sampled from from the normal distribution so we're actually ready now to begin assembling our uh, our final results and actually uh, work out what the probability is so let's go put a new line in here and I'm going to create a matrix called prices which is going to hold all of our actual price data remember this line above here is the percent uh, change and I'm going to just initialize this as a bunch of uh, zeros and the size of this matrix is going to be basically the same size as the epsilon the same number of columns as the epsilon matrix so epsilon um, dot shape and it's going to have the same number of columns and it should be a zero not a minus sign and epsilon dot shape um, and it's going to have one additional column so it's going to have the same number of days and then the zeroth day the initial um, the initial price of the stock will be our, our first column of that matrix so let's save it and let's set the initial price now so that uh, the first column of the matrix will be the, co uh, the stock price at the, uh, at the time I, I grabbed the, uh, the screenshot that you saw in the slide. So that was 196.8. And I believe, if memory is served, this needs to be wrapped in parentheses. It needs to be a, a, a tuple. So there we go. Okay, so we have our um, initial price set, and now we just have to, to fill in the rest of the prices. So let's put a line in. Okay, and I do not know how to fully vectorize this, so we need to take this uh, ds over s variable and uh, get the 
instead of the percent change on each day, the actual price at each day. And the only way I know how to do that is to loop over the columns. So we're going to go for I in, for I in range days. <clears throat> and we're going to have the, let's see, we're going to have the prices on the um, ice plus one day. So it's going to be all the all the columns and it's going to be on the ice plus one day and that's going to be equal to it's going to be equal to what's it going to be equal to it's going to be equal to the price on the ice day so all columns on day i and that's going to be uh plus the change from day to day so it's going to be the uh ds over s all columns ice day and that's going to be multiplied times the price on the ice day prices again all columns ice day that should be good before moving on let's plot the um plot what all this looks like so i'm going to plot each uh row of this as its own data set so i'm just going to copy and paste um, from my previous test codes here so i'm going to loop over the entire matrix and i'm going to plot each row um, and it's going to be a black line, and just because there's so many lines, I'm going to make them transparent uh, with the alpha set to uh, 0 0.05 so that um, it's not a total total mess. So let's save that. Let's go to my Python console and run this. Yeah, so that's what we'd expect. The um, price on the zeroth day is obviously the initial price, and it moves out uh, out in time. And you can see it sometimes moves up, sometimes moves down, and it looks like it's going to be roughly a, a normal distribution. And it does touch uh, 215. Where's 215 in here? It does touch it a fair amount of times, um, which we're going to have to figure out what percentage of times it, it actually is, is hitting 215. So, good. Let's uh, close this window and move on. So, let's get rid of this plotting code. And uh, now, let's see how many times it actually touches 215. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mp.where command. And I'm going to look, and this is going to produce a matrix of indices where the price is greater than or equal to 215. So, um, <clears throat> this is going to give every position in that matrix with the price is greater than or equal to 215 so that's a little too much for us we care only like uh you know if it goes above 215 and stays there we don't care that it, it has stays there we care that it only has reached 215 so we want to find all the unique row numbers in that matrix that correspond to that um, that event having occurred and we can do that with the unique command in numpy so we're going to create a variable called u i'm going to use mp.unique and I just want to find all the unique um, values of the um, the uh, each row of that uh, matrix IND. So that should be it. Oops. Go out of insert mode. Save it. So each entry in that U vector is going to be uh, an event that we're interested in. So basically, the length of that U vector is how many times um, an initial touch was reached. So our probability is just going to be the size of that U matrix divided by the total number of samples. And then let's just print that to the screen, and that should be it. So let's save this. Let me go to my Python console, and let's run this. And there's an error, of course. Samples is not defined. So samples, let's see, I called this samples down here, and I had originally defined this as samples. So I've already corrected it kind of off screen. I forgot to actually record that. So uh, our variable is now defined correctly. So now let's go back to our Python console and run the code. 34%. Let's run it again since it's a random thing. 35.6%. 35.4%. 35.5%. Thirty-two point one, so we're clustered around in that say thirty-three to thirty-five percent range. So let's compare that to what uh, the trading platform actually says. So let's go back to this uh, slide here. Let's go down to the two fifteen line, and I have the uh, probability of a touch plotted in the column right to the left of this uh, thing here, and we see that the number that it gives is thirty-four percent. So we're basically uh, 
in agreement with our trading platform. So I was going back over that video and I don't think I was very clear about the where command and the unique command. So I wrote a simple little script here. I just create a matrix. It's a three row by five column matrix and these are the individual rows. So let's just run this and print out what those um, what that matrix looks like. Oops, there's a uh, error in the code, but at least it prints out the matrix. So, you know, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. The second row is five, five. Oh, you can read it. So let's go back to our code here. And, 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 oh, this is why I, uh, yeah, I just commented out the lines I didn't want to run. So now let's run the where command. So we want to find where, and I just chose arbitrarily five, where this, where the entries of this matrix are greater than or equal to five. And I'm going to call that IND for indices. So let's go back here and run it again. And so here's our matrix and here's the result of that IND command. So this first array that comes back is the rows, what's the rows where, uh, that occurs. So it happens in all three rows. It happens in the zeroth row, the first row, and the second row. And then this is the corresponding column. So if you go here, like um, it happens the zeroth row, fourth column. So we go zeroth row, fourth column. That's, remember, it starts from zero, zero, one, two, three, four. So that's this entry here. Uh, but you can see for our code, we don't want to double count any of these rows. So this would actually uh, return five values of where it was greater than or equal to one, but we only want three. We don't want to double count like the fact that most of these are already above five. So that's where we use the unique command. We pass this this array to the unique command and it's not going to double count these ones. So let's go back, uh, back here and let's just uncomment that and that. Let's go back to our console and run it. So again, here is our um, here is our the results of the IND command. So here's this the result of this first um, the first entry, which corresponds to the rows, and then this is it passed through the uh, unique command. So it doesn't double count all these ones. So that's all we did in the Monte Carlo code. I don't think I was very clear on that. I just wanted to uh, do this little addition to uh, to clear that up. Sorry it took so long to get this out there. Uh, it, we were on vacation last month. I got buried in work uh, work projects when I got back. Had computer issues and then of course I screwed up the coding section when making this so I had to go back and redo it. So it took a lot longer than expected. Uh, so like I said before this is probably going to be the last Monte Carlo video for a while. I think I will do uh, probability making 50% on an option trade like a short short option trade. Uh, but I'll probably put that off for another month or so. And then unless there's an explicit in interest in Monte Carlo, this will probably be the, the last for, for a while. So if you guys have a topic you're interested in, uh, let me know below. Uh, people seem to like the finance videos, although I think I'd rather return to something more, uh, just pure numerical methods. So I'm not sure what I'll do, new, do next time. Uh, maybe something curve fitting related or, um, I don't know, we'll see. So um, yeah, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.